In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly. The time has come again. The champion must die. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Defend Your Movie. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. Thank you so much for joining us. This week, I am Sans, my co-host. I am Sans, it's a fancy word, I Sans. Know, it's not that fancy. <laughs> it's pretty fancy. <laughs> it, it, it means she's not here. It's, uh, Farrah Brook is not here this week, unfortunately. I'm sorry for all you big, giant Farrah lovers and Sean haters out there. Um, <laughs> but I do, I've, I have asked two of my super funny friends to come and replace her. We need two people just to replace Farrah. Well, but uh, then you also usually we, have a guest. We have a guest also, yeah. Oh. I was trying to be nice, okay, Pat? <laughs> that the voice you hear is my first guest, uh, my buddy, uh, super funny guy, writer, Video maker, sketch writer, sketch video maker. Yeah, yeah, all the, of those. Almost stand up comedian. Go for Pat Stango, hello, everybody. There he is. Hello, everybody. How are you, buddy? Good. And then my other guest, also stand up comedian, so, so funny. Roast Battle Champion. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, we should talk about that, too. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> Dina Hashem, everybody. Hello. Thank you so much for doing Thank this, Dina. You, I really appreciate it. What I mean by Rose Battle Champion. Well, this is what, it's so funny because I texted you oh, yeah. really quick. I want to talk about last night. It was like a crazy night for me. Uh, not cra- it wasn't that crazy for me, but I mean, it was kind of a nutty thing that happened. But I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I will host a bunch at the Comedy Cellar, and uh, Pat knows that. I don't know if Dina knows that. Mm-hmm. And last night was this, uh, people probably might have seen it online, like it was this crazy night where, the lineup, I got there. I thought it was going to be a regular show. Uh, there was a bunch of people that were on the list to go up. I, Jessica Curson was one of them. Pete Holmes was one of them. And there was a couple other people. I can't remember who was on the list. But Pete Holmes, he was first. He was on the list. And that's already like kind of a, you know, he's, hu- he's, yeah, a, he's a huge a name. Person. And that's already a big drop in. So, like, people already know who he is from his show. It's in the second season. He's podcast. He, all that stuff, right? So that was already it. But he was going first. He was already on the bill. But then one after another, all these famous people just kept showing up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So literally, Pete was there, and then Aziz showed up, uh, and Zari, and he wanted to go up, right? Mm-hmm. And then John Stewart, Damn. the Daily Show guy, showed up, and he <laughs> the wanted to go. Daily Show guy. guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> and uh, and then he wanted to go. So everybody's kind of hanging out, and then uh-huh. the manager's like, yeah, they're all going to go up. Uh-huh. And then I go, I just brought up, so then Pete goes up first, I bring up Aziz, I go back up. John Stewart's there, and also, I don't know where I see Louis C.K. is sitting there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then already by this point, I knew that Amy Schumer was on her way to come do the show. So that the show went from being whoever was on it to Pete Holmes, who was on it, and then the rest of just famous people. Oh so, so then it ended up, this is the lineup it ended up being. It ended up being Pete Holmes, Aziz Ansari, John Stewart, Louis C.K., Amy Schumer, and then Amy Schumer brought up Madonna. That's insane. <laughs> Were they just hanging Madonna, out? I also fucking Madonna came to the show, and I, I, everybody, all the comics that were in the hallway watching the show because everybody was famous in the show were like, "What is going on? Like, uh-huh. what is happening?" So were they all trying to like bigfoot each other in the sense of like once. It's like, oh, this person thinks they're famous. Now I'm going to go up. No. They, because I, it seems like it definitely, no. that order gets progressively more famous as it goes. Uh, yeah, I think they just, no. But that was a result of them all kind of being cool with the, idea, the, the, the situation and being like, yeah, I'll go after him. That's great. Like, I think Aziz had to get out of there. So he, I think he had to go second. And then mm-hmm. it just worked out that Sean Stewart, like nicest guy ever, was just like, yeah, I'll go whenever. It's uh-huh. fine. But it just worked out that it got that more and more famous. Uh-huh. But the weirdest thing was... Was there anyone like Norman or someone who was like, like, oh, I, don't bump me. 
Ford Madonna. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nobody was like that. I actually, I don't even know who's in the lineup. I didn't even look at the sheet after I saw how many famous people were there. Uh-huh. But it was such a weird, bizarre situation because already any one or two of those people would have been like a crazy night or like a, a really good show. They have a lot of drop-ins, but not where it's the whole lineup is like yeah. that. So I'm there. Like Everybody's kind of freaking out. I literally, all I'm doing, I did my seven minutes in the beginning because they had to keep it tight. I did my seven minutes in the beginning, and I'm bringing up Pete Holmes. People know who that is they're freaking out for that mm-hmm. a little bit they're like awesome then I'm like alright this next guy you'll know him too and I just uh-huh, kept uh-huh. doing that I'm like you know this guy Louis uh-huh. CK uh-huh. and then uh, I was like one more uh, Amy Schumer and I brought her out and then she brought up Madonna but she brought up Madonna in such a great way because she was like um, she goes alright I'm gonna bring up my friend don't worry it's not anything crazy like Madonna or something like that and then sure enough it's Madonna, <laughs> <laughs> it's Madonna to the point where they didn't believe her uh-huh, like to uh-huh. the point where she goes Madonna and nobody reacts. They, they right, kind of right, laughed right. awkwardly again, thinking that she was making the same joke. Uh-huh. And she's like, no, motherfucking Madonna is here. And then she comes up on stage, and they lose their minds. Wow. And I didn't even know Madonna was there until I saw, like, four security guards. And I was like, does Amy Schumer have four security uh-huh, guards? Uh-huh, I'm like, uh-huh. she doesn't. I've seen her here before. Uh-huh. And then sure enough, I'm like, who is that? And then they're like, oh, Madonna's here. <laughs> so what does Madonna do? She goes up and talks to Amy, and they talk about their vaginas for five minutes, okay. and that's it. Okay, I, cool. And I'm not making a sexist yeah, remark. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. literally what they did. And they know each other, so they kind of they, they kind of bust each other's balls a little bit, and then and then they talked about their vaginas, and, and that was it. And people had a huge thrill. People were freaking out. Yeah, I mean, Madonna... I mean, like, all of those people are obviously super famous and everything, but then Madonna is such another it's, level it's of fame. It's beyond. Then you realize how little comedy means when Madonna comes up. Oh, but it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, this is, like, yeah. a level below, like, a god coming well, down. Well, they even post it online. They're like, 12, 12 bucks and a two-drink minimum, and you saw Madonna on stage. <laughs> That's insane. You didn't see her singing, but you saw her. But, I, oh, no, it's beyond. It's it's. Michael Jackson famous. Yeah, like yeah, she's yeah. Michael Jackson famous. Yeah. It's it's not even like cuz now, you know, she's been around for 35 years. She's just a a fixture. She's right. she's a legend, she's an icon. It's not like people are obsessed with her. It's like insane. Did you uh see if she wanted to do the podcast? I did. I asked her twice on the way out. You should kind of <laughs> defend a Madonna movie. I go, can you defend Desperately Seeking Susan? Yes. Can you defend that? Or can you defend... Body of Evidence. Dick Tra- Body of Evidence with Willem Dafoe. Oh, that would be a fairly highly rated episode. I think we could shut down the podcast after that. I'm pretty uh-huh. sure of it. Uh-huh. So that was my night. So I posted online and people were going ape shit. I got like the most Instagram likes I've ever that, gotten yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> so well, people were awesome. going nuts. But it was such a surreal thing because already that place is known for having big drop-ins. But the fact that the whole lineup was like all these crazy famous people is so batshit crazy. So that was my night. I wanted to mention it. It was nuts. Uh, but let's let's get to the meat of the podcast. We're going to do a little bit differently. My buddy Pat here. Let's yeah. explain our situation. Let's do that. Uh, Pat. In full disclosure, Pat runs a podcast called in How to Watch disclosure. Movies the Right Way. <laughs> Let's get this up up front let's, for let's, legal purposes. Well, I think I think they might be a little bit you might be a little bit upset at me. I think because I, I'll, <laughs> we'll okay, I'll be completely honest. Pat runs a movie podcast. We'll tell them what it's called. It's called How to Watch Movies the Right Way. How to Watch Movies it's the a Right podcast Way. Podcast about how to watch movies the right the way. the right way. And I did the podcast. I probably I don't know. I'm at this point probably almost year a year ago. ago yeah. yeah, and it was. So much fun because what it was, we, we went to go see Cloverfield Lane, 10 Cloverfield Lane, whenever that came out. Uh-huh. And then we talked about it afterwards. And, and dissected I, it and, for about two hours. Yes, and dissected it for about oh. two hours. And the whole Cloverfield universe. And I was like a pig and shit. I was losing my mind how much fun I had. And I wanted to do a podcast anyway because my other one with Dan St. Germain ended. Yeah. So I literally was like, I'm going to do a movie podcast. I'm going to do that. <laughs> and then Pat was like, You son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm You're saturating the, the market. I'm supposed to be the only movie podcast out there. <laughs> and now there's two. Now there's two. Uh, so anyway. Mm. Explain to people what the podcast is about, what you guys do. Um, so we often, it's myself and my co-host Clayton Gumbert, and we often go see a movie that day with a guest and talk Which, about it afterwards. Clayton's name sounds like he's like a. It a, sounds like a, a fake a name. cartoon donkey. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is. I wish he was here so I could tell him that Clayton Gumbert. It sounds like you should say it with a really dumb accent, and, and he's he, not. He's a really smart guy. He sounds nothing name, like his name sounds. No, he doesn't. He does. He's very smart guy. He's a great, and he's also a gorgeous man. He's a very oh. gorgeous man. Yeah, and yeah. literally, but his name sounds like he has a. A jug on that has suspenders at the top of the jug. Uh-huh. You know how they wear the barrels and like uh-huh. 
No, no clothes on. Like, you guys going to the fireworks show? That's how his name sounds. I'm Clayton Gilbert. Yeah, so I host it with a hillbilly. <laughs> a cartoon hillbilly. Um, yeah, we'll often go see movies that day, new movies. Um, and then we'll sometimes have themed episodes. We have an episode that we did a few weeks ago with Matt McCarthy where we – Talked about professional wrestling movies. <sighs> Matt, that's in Matt's blood. Oh, it was, Matt will not do anything unless you're talking about wrestling. He was pulling out movies that we've ne- like movies starring like Mexican wrestlers and stuff. Like not just the <laughs> you know the sort of yeah. like surface level Hulk Hogan movies. He's like, no, here's a movie that El Santo did in oh, 1945 <laughs> that only Matt cares about. Yeah. Oh, but it's great. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, yeah. So we'll do things like that. We had uh, Tony Zarrett talk about the uh, crossover of memes and movies. Now, explain that. Cause I wasn't listening to the episode, but I needed a chance to. What do you mean the crossover memes into movies? Well, we, Like we, memes based on movies memes becoming based viral? based on movies. So sort of like, you know, you got a lot of memes that are from sh- uh, screenshots of movies. But then also we looked at... What famous memes could be adapted into movies? Ah. <laughs> like, can there be a Scumbag Steve movie? Sorry, What's Scumbag Steve? He's a famous meme. Oh, is he really? Like I don't scumbaggy know guy. Oh, you guys have I don't to know get it. deep into the meme verse. I have to get the meme. I just know cheeseburger, something about a cheeseburger. Not into the right. What's what? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, that's I haven't seen that meme, but there are literally thousands, memes. right? Yeah. yeah. So you can make them. Movies into all. Yeah, we were thinking of like who to cast and stuff. <laughs> so we were like, Adam Devine has come back, Steve the meme <laughs> in a movie. So fun stuff like that we do. But let me ask you this because yeah. I think originally uh, one of the points of the podcast was to feed into a, a, a thing to show people how to watch movies the right way. And yes, we, that's, that's, uh, uh, we, we often give a lot of tips for moviegoers, how to be a better movie viewer. Yeah. How to, and then like useful tips, like how to sneak into movies and stuff like that. Well, I, um, that's such a great idea. I, we talk about sometimes on this podcast, like the circumstances on how you see a movie mm-hmm. can shape if you like that movie or not. Like if you see it high, if you see it as a kid, if you see it after a breakup, Mm-hmm. If you see it while you're in a relationship and you're in love, and I love this movie because I saw this, it was our first date with the girl that I'm dating now, or you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So we talk about that a lot. And I, I love the idea of like, this is opinions about not even the movie itself, of different things about going to the movie theater. Do you have strong opinions about that? Like, my, the biggest one that I can think of that I put online that people were commenting on are coming attractions part of the movie going experience. My, I am a diehard coming attraction guy. Mm. I will. I like them. Uh, you like them, but will you make sure that you're there? No, it's not like See, that. See, that's yeah, not. No, you don't really? like them then. Yeah. Wow. Well, you do like them, but not as much as I do. <laughs> I will make sure I'm there. For, uh, coming, if I don't see the coming attractions. I've done this where I've gotten there and it's been like tw- 15 minutes into the movie and I know it's like starting right then and I'm like, I won't go see it. Wow. Yeah. It's like movie foreplay. Yeah. And what do you think, yeah. Pat? Oh, I love comedy attractions. You love them, right? I, I Would often, you... even if it's a movie that I at that I'm looking forward to seeing, I will often get a little upset when I know the movie is starting and I've seen the last trailer. Yeah, same here. Like, I'm, I'm never one of those people who's like, oh, my God, another trailer. I'm always like, yes, another trailer. Another tra- yeah, everybody gets so mad. And they do, like, and also, if you love trailers, this is, like, our golden age right now because they do, like, 20 minutes of trailers oh, now right. before the movie. I feel like trailers are so bad now. They all look the same. Like, And I like trailers. I, don't know. My, I have a favorite trailer. Do you have a favorite trailer? Oh, do I? Probably if I think about it. What's your favorite trailer? The Handmaiden. It's a recent movie, but the trailer is just, I, I, I've watched it on repeat. It's just got this amazing music and the way they cut it. Well, that's what I love about it. Like, if I had a job, if I was not doing comedy, I would want to be the person who picks mu- music from movies and trailers. Oh, it's Ooh, great. Yeah. It's great. It's awesome. And, and it's, like, so easy because you basically, every third trailer you cut, you're just using Under Pressure. Like, that is the most <laughs> popular trailer song ever. <laughs> It's just that. It's always, always under no, no. pressure. It's always uh, like a character every, thinking like about his life. Every and, fourth trailer, uh, Salisbury Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Climbing up on Salisbury Hill. That's in every movie. Maybe not now, but that was that was a big one back in the day. Also, yeah. Creep, sung by it's children, like, is really popular oh, right now. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love kids singing old Yeah, children songs. singing like songs that you didn't think of as creepy yeah. but then they are mm-hmm. you know yeah. that's freaking funny yeah you're right about <laughs> well there's <laughs> so pressure. many trailers that are better you get there first day like on your job where you're picking the music you're like so what are we going with uh, Under Pressure or, 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 <laughs> or uh, We're the talk- Champions I don't right. know what do you want to do that talking head song that they uh, <laughs> this is not my oh uh, Home uh, yeah. Naive Melody yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a great song the one from Wall Street 
Yes. This, this must be the place it's called. Yeah. And it's a great song, but it's in every <laughs> freaking movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, I... You know what? I don't have a favorite all-time trailer. I'm trying to think of one... I've definitely rewatched trailers like like a bunch of times. I'm trying to think. Well, did you see that shitty? Uh, was it Suicide Squad, the DC movie? Is that what it's called? I didn't see it. I heard because I heard terrible how terrible movie, was. but it's got a great trailer. The trailer the trailer they just cool. cut it to Bohemian Rhapsody, and it's yeah. like all slow motion fighting, and it's like basically the song is great, and I like hearing that song for two minutes. Yeah, and then it's the worst movie ever but i've watched that trailer like 30 times because i think that is such a great piece of entertainment absolutely and also um, a, a great movie that had one was guardians of the galaxy both of them have amazing trailers mm-hmm. i uh if i could I, that would be my job i would pick music for trailers and then you know what one just came out that's really good and he usually has awesome trailers is wes anderson movies oh, and yeah. there's a new one called like isle of dogs or something oh, I didn't see it's that. an animated one and it's and i almost cried watching the trailer <laughs> you gotta see that trailer now i want to go see a movie just to see the trailer i know <laughs> it's online it's online but like it's so good mm-hmm. it's so good so that's what i'm curious about i'm like i want to find out what people think because like, people right away adamantly would sometimes would be like no i don't care about the trailers i get there for the movie i'm like how can you not get there for the trailers? Yeah, get your That's huge. Work. I get if you see a good trailer, you're like, oh my god, I'm so excited for that movie. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to just comment with the person you're with, like, oh yeah, I'm going to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're like, oh yeah, right, exactly. Like, oh, that looks good. Oh, yeah. who's in this? Who's in this? Just commenting on your breath. Yeah, you, become, you just become a divorced mom. I don't know what. Oh, oh, who's this? Tilly. I wonder. I thought she was doing TV. How does she do TV? How does she do both? That must. She must be very busy. She must be so busy. <laughs> That's a good voice to do. The mom, ma- your mom going to watch the movies. Oh, it's so crowded here. It's so crowded. Oh, can we just watch this at home? Is this one of those? Is this uh, one of those theaters with waiters? <laughs> is waiter food? You know? Oh, look at this! What do they have? Oh, recliners? <laughs> like in the living room? <laughs> like mine is better. I like my recliner. That better. is one of the greatest things to happen in movies. Because I think what happened was, in my guess. The movie business, they're losing out to people's gigantic fucking TVs that they put mm-hmm. down payments on and pay off for the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. And they're watching movies, waiting until they come out on, on iTunes, and they're watching them, or Netflix, and they're watching them in their house. And Hollywood was like, well, what can we do? Or the movie theater owners were like, what do we do? Mm-hmm. And all these boutique movie theater owners, like the Arclight and, um, what's the other one, Draft House and all those, right? Mm-hmm. Was Draft House one of them? Yeah, Alamo Draft House was a That's the food one, one right? Yeah. That's one of and the they had ones. like recliners and tables and food service. Yeah, and- food service. But even now, even the chain ones now are doing recliners. Like the they AMC, have they all AMCs have are doing them, and it's like, oh, it's the best. You do like go to a late movie. I went to go see. I think was it Guardians? It was Guardians too. And mm-hmm. I went with my buddy Robert Dean, who mm-hmm. you guys know who that mm-hmm. is. And we went, and we were like, it was. I loved it. I love every. I the, going to the movies is my favorite thing to do. I oh, go, it's the greatest. Well, the other thing is, will you go to the movies by yourself? Oh, yes. 100, I 100, love it. Yeah. I, I love prefer it. it. Mm-hmm. I love. I think there's some people that won't do it, right? Well, it's not. You don't talk during the movie. There's no reason to have someone there, really. It's fun to talk about after, but for the actual experience, yeah, like, yeah, it's so much better no to see it by yourself alone. and then go to talk about it on a podcast. <laughs> That's the <laughs> ideal way to see a movie. It really is because uh, when we went to go see Ten Cloverfield Lane for you know the <laughs> the podcast that inspired this podcast. Inspired, sure, we'll go with that word. Uh, it's not copying your podcast. Stop <laughs> oh, no. doing that. It's not. Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> some lawyers would say one thing, some lawyers would say another thing. <laughs> Depends which lawyer you're talking to. <laughs> no, but what it's, happened it's was. I don't see any t shirt sales. It's all right. <laughs> Hey, we don't sell t shirts. Oh, you know. I got you a water. How about that? There's a water right in front of you. Uh, we. We, you're right about that because you're, when you see him, also to be honest, when we did 10 Clue of Your Lane, that's the type of movie, I love that universe, and that's the type of movie that there's so much mystery to it, you're chomping at the bit to talk about it. So after we went to the movie, went in Times Square, we went late, I think, one night, and then we did a podcast late. Oh, yeah. We recorded so it right after. Delirious. But the whole train ride, think about this. You know how hard it is not to talk about a movie? After you've just seen it, it's like almost impossible. That is the hardest thing me and Clayton do in our lives is <laughs> to see these movies together and then not oh, talk yeah. about them until we get back to the podcast and, studio. Yeah, isn't That's that insane? Crazy. I haven't even thought about that. Because yeah. it's such a natural, organic thing to do. It's such a, a weird, you have a muscle, not muscle memory, what would you call it? Just a, it's a knee jerk thing to be like, 
It's oh my god, what do you think of that? It's a human <laughs> impulse. It's a human impulse. Yeah, as soon as you leave the theater. No, we, yeah. But so for his podcast, you have to wait for the train ride. to. The, it's like, wow. but you're almost like not even talking. You're just like standing yeah. there because you're like, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to, I don't want to, not spoil it, but you don't want to like start the conversation going. You don't want to do it. So that's kind of what helps. And then when you get to the thing and he sets it up, you're like, oh my god, I have so many opinions. Because <laughs> it gives you a chance to think about that's it cool. and everything. So that's why I loved it so much. Uh, and also, the movie we saw was su- a movie you could have a two-hour conversation about. Right, right. Because we're a also movie. then dissecting four other movies in that universe. Yes, and right, exactly. And we were talking about movie universe a little bit, marketing yeah. websites that have to do with the Cloverfield universe. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, they are exactly. So uh, basically, I'm, that's I'm very particular about how I go to the movies, and that's another thing you said too. It's like, yeah, if you don't. If you go alone, it's fine because you're not supposed to talk during the movies. There's people that talk during the movie. That's another thing that I is like, I don't usually say anything to anybody, like confrontationally. But if you talk during the movies, I will be like, guys, like guys, stop, stop talking. And you should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was someone snoring during Mother, and I almost lost my shit. Oh my god! Luckily, he stopped. But I was about to get up because. You pay eighteen dollars for a ticket. You don't want it ruined by some. Oh, I would. Story. I would woken him up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. at that price, it's it's just a hair below going to see a Broadway show and someone talking at that. Yeah, you know, because like you could get Broadway tickets for like eighty bucks or something. Yeah. so it's like it's close mm-hmm. enough. Well, it's, you're paying my, even you're paying even if it's twenty bucks. It, it's the city. It's New York City. You're paying twenty bucks for the ticket. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah who cares if it's ten bucks? It's like yeah. one of those things. Like shut the fuck up. You become yeah. George Costanza. Have you got? Have either of you actually seen George like, Costanza? He goes, oh, yeah. I have to do a Seinfeld reference every podcast. <laughs> Where he goes, and if you think I'm kidding, try me. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, try me, because I want to it. <laughs> when he stands the guy. <laughs> well, I, I had a situation like that maybe like a year or two ago where I saw that movie, The Witch. I don't know if you did oh, you yeah. seen that. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I, had seen, I was seeing it for the second time. Oh, I heard time. that was good. I didn't oh, see that. Oh, it's great. You love horror movies. I love horror movies. And this was not like a gore horror movie. It's one of those like art house horror movies. So I was seeing it actually for the second time. This time I was going with my girlfriend. And there were like these kids, and I say kids, like NYU students, who just immediately didn't like the movie. And they were sort of like talking and like laughing through the whole movie. Like it was one of those things where I think that movie is a much slower horror movie than horror movies usually are. And they weren't into it and kind of like shit on it the whole way through. And then like right after the movie ended, we were like a row away from them. I just like went total like crazy old man on them. I was like, <laughs> you fucking dorks. <laughs> you talked through the whole movie. And it was like 10 you of them. You said you were oh, fucking dorks? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It was so. I mean, that's not old man. That's going to their age. You kind fucking of, yeah. dorks. Yeah, yeah. Like Aaron, Aaron, like, at first was like, oh, I hope he doesn't do this to get into a fight. And then she immediately was like, oh, this isn't going to turn into a fight, but he sounds like such a dork. <laughs> <laughs> using the word dork. <laughs> Wait, so what did the kids do? There was like one kid who was like, said something, and then the rest, I think, were just scared of like a person yelling at them. Like, it's, yeah. because it is funny, like when you think back, it's like 18 or 19 is pretty young still. And, you know, oh, and, if, yeah. and if like if someone's yelling at you, like you're still young enough to be like you still have this. rules in your life. Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. it's like you you can't confront somebody older than you at that point. You still, especially kids now, I feel like they feel. Well, also, like I mean, teenagers. like I'm not like a tough guy. I knew it was a bunch of NYU students. There was no real threat oh, yeah. there. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My when I was a kid, me and my dad went to go see like not casino. I forget what it was. And there was a guy behind us, and he was on like a date, and. uh my dad was a really – he died a while ago, but he was a really nice guy, like lovable, huggable guy. But he had like a temper and he was intimidating when he like needed to be, like that like that kind yeah. of thing. Where it was like never was – yelled at us, but never like hit us or anything crazy like that. But he was like an intimidating guy in public. If you, if you didn't know him, it could be intimidating. And there was this couple behind us and the guy just kept talking. And he was – it was a casino. I was to go see a casino mm-hmm. or whatever it was. And – uh He's talking, talking, and my, I could see on my dad's face. He's waiting, like, through the trailers, through the credits, and finally this guy is just talking, won't <laughs> stop talking, like, the whole time, to his date. Like, and he was saying, like, stupid shit, too. I forget what he was saying. He's, like, trying to impress her, yeah. like, that he knew shit. And my dad literally turns around and he goes, hey, if you were going to talk the whole time, we would have sat over there. What the fuck? <laughs> and the guy was like, why don't you relax? And my dad wasn't a big guy, but he was heavy. But he was like, and then, so he stands up and over the guy goes, why don't you fucking relax? <laughs> and he goes, puts his finger right in the guy's face. Uh, and the guy 
taps the girl and they both slink away and go to the back that's of the house. Awesome. It great. is amazing how quickly things escalate in the dumbest situation. <laughs> well, that's my dad. Like I'm like, you just did it. You just opened yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. That's the temper. Like you're not gonna, you know. Yeah. My dad was a jail guard at Riker, so like when he had, needed to get mad, he got mad. Just like Pat's family uh, correction officer, but like. So that was one of those crazy moments where I'm like, oh my God, my dad's badass. But he wasn't. He was like a lovable guy, but he would do shit like that. That's a hero. He almost got into a fight with some like a mob guy at OTB once because the guy, the guy took his spot and he goes, that's my spot. And he goes, fuck you, whatever it was. And then he's like, give me my spot. But then he got in an argument and then the guy's friends came over. They go, kick his ass, Sonny. And my dad just goes, Sonny? Your name is Sonny? Get the fuck out of here. It was like crazy. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you stop? I think I went to go meet him or something. Whatever it was. So that's him. But confrontation in the movie theaters, I have no problem with that. That is that is the Wild West for me. I will fuck people up. Are there like I will theater? die to enjoy my movie. Yeah. I think that's fair. Are there movie theaters that you guys like avoid for that reason? Cause yeah, I, Times I Square like, usually. Times Square, 100%. Yeah. I'll never go But there. we went yeah. that time and it wasn't bad. We went to go see uh, Cloverfield Lane. You know, You won't avoid anything? Yeah, Times Square, I will not go. I won't go. For any reason. Yeah. You won't go during prime time, is that what it is? I, I try and not see what I think is going to be a good movie there. Like, I'll go see, you know, if you go see a Transformers level movie, like, you could see it in Times Square, or yeah. like a Fast and the Furious, where, like, you're expecting the crowd to yell throughout it anyway, where it's, like, yeah. kind of okay to do that. Was Were we together? I, I agree with that. If it's you, know, a, you know it's going to be bad. It's like, Fast and Furious, we're all going there. <laughs> To hang out as a family, yes. to yell shit at the yeah. screen, of to course. cry together, to laugh together, to it. yell together. That fun. I almost don't have a problem with. Yeah. Uh, totally not. I'm totally fine with that. We, was, it, we, was I with you in the movies when we go to see Rambo? The new, the newest Rambo? I mean, I know I've seen it in the theater, and it might have been with you. It there was, was two ago. moments I remember. The newest Rambo, people were just heckling this movie the entire it was uh-huh. so bad which that's okay for Rambo for Rambo for it's totally good Rambo, yeah. and then also the last uh, Indiana Jones when uh, it turns out the whole thing is like an alien spaceship or it's interdimensional people should have been ship. required to yell throughout that whole movie <laughs> well at the end of it when people figure out what it was and it flies away whatever happens people literally like it was a comedy they started hysterical <laughs> laughing it was the weirdest actually it was kind of weird because I'm like I wasn't out loud laughing I was like this is ridiculous but it was interesting to me how people were like <laughs> they just couldn't even. It was like most of the theater was just f- crying, laughing at this stupid plot twist at the uh-huh. end or whatever it was. So yeah, I I think there's certain things that apply to certain movies. Like if I want to go see a good movie and you start even talking a little bit, mm-hmm. I'll give you a couple seconds and I'll go. You gotta stop. It's uh-huh. really the anger that's more distracting than they're talking. It's like you're bubbling up. Mm-hmm. Yes, rage yep. and- <laughs> absolutely. You're right. You're, like, yeah. you're envisioning all the things you want to do yeah. in their, yeah. their face. Well, like, me and Clayton saw the last Planet of the Apes movie a couple of months ago, and we we end up seeing a lot in Times Square just because like my studio was close enough that that's where we record, so that's always the most convenient. So we saw that in Times Square, and there were like these teenagers during that. Who I don't know if they didn't think there were going to be apes in this movie, but like every time <laughs> apes were on screen, they would start doing like ape noises. Like, oh. making, and I was like, "What theater was it you said?" In Times Square. Oh yeah, no. So and it's can't. like, well, you can't make ape noises during the eight. There's obviously apes in yeah. Planet of the Apes. No, Why they didn't. They, they were knew. like, they went to make the noises. <laughs> but that see the thing is like that's a good movie. That's like a right. But you went like to Times Square to see it. I know. It was my mistake. If you live in New York, you know which movie to go to if you don't want to run into anybody and run into confrontation and run into noise. And which one is that, folks? Kips Bay Movie that's, Theater. Oh, that's what he was saying. I was before this. I was saying that's yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. one to go to. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely the best. Oh, I didn't know. I was saying that I like Regal Battery, but I'll try that out too. Oh, I never go down that far that south. Exactly. I never had to, yeah, you're right. That's yeah, a good, yeah, yeah. good call. <laughs> but you go to uh, Kips Bay. It's First off, the reason why it's great, it's set up like a suburban movie theater. You walk in, it's gigantic. Mm-hmm. And it's like if you were going just to so a much theater in like Jersey or, or Long Island. Just t- tons of waste of space. And I, I always wonder, I always ask the employees, I'm like, how do you guys stay open? I never see anybody. They're like, people come here on the weekends. I'm like, whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll do, I'll, I'm going to go to my theater now that has nobody in it uh-huh. and watch a thing privately. But there's something to be said about that. I used to be of the mindset of like, I love when I'm by myself in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. And 
uh, and actually, I'll name drop here. Uh, got somebody else challenged that. This guy, Aaron Kruger. Do you know who that is? He's actually a screenwriter. He's oh, friends with a friend of mine. Really? I, I'm, not, I'm not close to them. Yeah. Uh, he wrote, <gasps> uh, what was that? Arlington Road, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. He wrote Arlington Road, and he wrote uh, one of the screams, and he wrote a bunch of... Yeah, I remember And he wrote uh, Reindeer Games as well. Yeah. They cha- I think they changed a lot of it or something. Oh, I don't that's know. That's funny, yeah, because he's like get a him for famous... the podcast. I just try to get him for the yeah. podcast. Nice. I'm going to hit him up. <laughs> But anyway, that'd be perfect. I, why, why didn't I not think of that? Yeah. But, why are you wasting time with us when you I know, what have the fuck? guy you were on the <laughs> road? I got roast battle and how to watch movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, I wrote so, Scream 4. Yeah, he wrote Scream 4 and he wrote Transformers too, like one of the Transformers. Oh, Jesus. But what happened is I said that in front of him once and he was like, no, you're out of your mind. That's the And he's a movie writer. He's a screenwriter. And he goes, That's, I, I go to the most packed theaters to see movies because you see how people react to the movie. And it's like, it makes it so much better. You see a comedy with people, it's so much, it makes it funnier to you. And you see a scary movie with people, yes. it makes it more I agree. scary. I agree, it amplifies that. You have to trust people not to ruin it, though. Yes, you do. <laughs> and I think, and he told me that advice a long time ago. I think it's gotten worse over time. I think ever since we've had our cell phones in our faces, and not to sound like an old curmudgeon, but like I think people talking during the movies has gotten worse since I was a kid maybe maybe I'm not maybe I'm exaggerating but or maybe my, my yeah, temper everyone's is everyone's more easily distracted and they want they want stimulus every second yeah yeah right exactly so and they're not they're not like it's almost like they're not trained to like enjoy a performance it's like yeah. why people go to comedy shows there now should be and like just talk during people that. should have to take there should be there should be movie some kind etiquette of certification yeah. or Sometimes. something. You come in, you enjoy yourself, you sit down, <laughs> or like <laughs> or like a theater, a theater that you could go to where everyone who's allowed to go there has been went through the certification. So you know you're going with like oh, really yeah. well trained movie goers. That is a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah. Or it, you may, it wouldn't be a class they went through, but if it's like literally yeah, like a class, like a test, and you you have to like you have to go for like a day course, and you take a test. I think to go to like a promise. You have like to like watch like... a movie with an instructor watching you. <laughs> yeah, like that I'll... would officially be the easiest job ever. Yeah, I think you would. I, in reality, I think if you did it, it would have to be like I think we're like, oh, you sign this document that you're not going to ruin this movie. For well, there people. are theaters yeah. like that. I think the Alamo. There's a, there's a few theaters where where or at least their policy is like way tighter in terms of what they'll kick you out for but i want trained professional movie watchers sitting next to me the worst is when you find out your friend is a bad movie goer i, I dated oh, a guy who would bad. take out his phone Ooh. during the movie oh. and i would just never see movies with him again it yeah so painful it is when you realize somebody talks during the movie talking phone ugh. and i how let's say let's do let's talk about this when your friend you ne- didn't ever realize this before, either you never went to a movie with them or whatever, when you realize they're like that, what's your go to? What do you do? I just ignore and just keep watching the movie and I go, yay. I just go, um, like I just nod kind of weirdly. Yeah, you just can't acknowledge. There's so much emotion at that point. <laughs> because you're so, you're mad, and but you're also trying to pay attention to the movie and you're also like, fuck, because you're like, I can never see a movie with this person yeah. again. Like everything, your world is coming crashing down at that moment. So you're like, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like you're passive aggressively just nodding, like yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a bobblehead. Just That's the move. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and how did that go dating someone like that? Because I mean, like, movies are part of dating, but you're a comic, so you know, go out at night. Exactly. Yeah. Or <laughs> ever. A lot of cases. Yeah. Let's be honest. You're not really kind of just going to shows, getting some beers, and then banging. Whoa. What? I don't know. I don't know what you do. No, That's anyway. what happens after you do a show with Madonna. <laughs> you just get real blue. Uh, anyway, let's do this. Let's segue into a little uh, section of where I'm going to be the blank slate here. We have one of two things we can do. I want to do this first because you guys have a shared experience mm-hmm. that I don't have. And it's funny because you both texted me asking me this question. You asked me, did I see Mother? That's out now. And Mother is the new movie with Jennifer Lawrence. Um, it's a Darren Aronofsky movie. And he's the one who directed. He directed Pi and then he directed Requ- Requiem for a Dream. And then he also. What was his Black big one? Swan Black Swan. Black Swan. Which actually I love Blacks. I like. Oh, I don't love it. I like it. Uh, but he's like does, does these really messed up, like intense, like intense psychological, like thriller type movies. And this one called Mother is it Mother Exclamation Point? Yes. Is that what it is? It's Mother. Mother. <laughs> yeah. It's Mother. That's what. <laughs> that's what you're calling out for. Like if your mom's talking to the movie theater. Mother, stop talking <laughs> at the movie theater. <laughs> so that's how Mike Pence climbs. That's how Mike. Yeah. Mother, <laughs> uh, what'd you call it? So literally, 
Um, you both have seen it. I have not. So I would like to do is I would like to give you my – I read an article about it okay. and I kind of spoiled myself for it. So, so I we're spoiling know, people here. You're spoiling people yeah, here. Yeah, yeah okay. just so you know. Right. Oh, uh, here's a disclaimer from now. We're, they're going to talk about Mother. So if you haven't seen it and you want to see it. Uh, stop now. Stop now. And then call your mother. How about that? Yeah. How about you? <laughs> call your mother. Go call, see it together. Call your mother. And then, and then pick it up right from this point. <laughs> so right now, from this point on in the podcast, at least for a few minutes, there's going to be spoilers about the movie Mother. And uh, so we're going to start now. So basically, <laughs> what I think it's about, just from what I read, I guess because I read the plot, so I know kind of what it's about, but I didn't. I don't know... You guys seeing it, you know, it doesn't do justice reading the article. So what I think it's about is like there's a a cut. There are a couple. Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem are a couple, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they move into a new house. Mm-hmm. Is that okay? Or, or, we keep going from there. Or, okay, I think that's what it is. From what I remember, mm-hmm. and basically what happens is the house has these properties. The house becomes alive in a way. All this weird. Messed up stuff starts happening. Maybe this article was wrong. Yeah, no, no, it's off. Wait, they, did, they did said the, the first... house. In the article, they were like the yeah. house is alive, but all this weird stuff just keeps happening. So they have all these weird visitors that show up. Yes, yes. that happens. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, and it's famous people that show up, isn't it? Michelle Pfeiffer yeah. and uh, some other people. Mm-hmm. So they come in, and there's some weird stuff. Like at one point, she's trying to clean the bathroom, and there's something really some strange. Something bloody in the bathroom, mm-hmm. but that you can't see because you're from the point of view of the thing, so you mm-hmm. can't really see what it is, and mm-hmm. you, or you kind of know what it is. So, and then what they what they drew from it is that it. I oh, well, this is what I want to ask you guys. This is why I won't. I'm like a pussy when it comes to like scary movies, okay. and I saw the trailer for it, and I was like, I don't want to well, watch it. The trailer for this scared you? It freaked me out. Well, the okay. trailer made it look like a horror movie, and it's it's not. It's not it's weird marketing. For okay, it. it's weird. Okay, so maybe I will check it out, but I literally. The what they said in the article was basically like the things in the house. It has these biblical undertones. It's all these biblical lessons that are done in this weird, abstract way. Mm-hmm. And there's it's non sequitur. It's just like there's no real. It's not based in reality. It's just literally. It's all supposed to be symbolic. Is that true? It's a whole allegory. Yes. It's okay. Yeah. All right, that's what it is. So if you guys. What, what was your impression of the movie? Because we, uh, we should I talk mean, about one movie on this podcast. Uh, well, I mean, I, I loved it. Did you I, love I, it? Yeah, I don't think the one thing I think that got wrong reason, is I don't me, think the house is what's causing anything in this movie. Okay, I want to find out what that is. But real quick, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there it, it is super controversial. Half people, half the people love this movie, and half the people like mm-hmm. hated this movie. Where it was all over Twitter, people were like destroying this movie. So you loved it, Pat. I loved it. Hopefully, you hate it, and then we'll have I don't the exact hate it. split. No, we got I a really Siskel like and Ebert thing going. <laughs> well, it's like it's not a mainstream movie, but it was put out as a mainstream movie. Well, so they have mainstream people in it. Jennifer it's, Lawrence, it, she's yeah, like one of the biggest true. stars around. But you know like, what, what the movie is, it's not meant for like a wide audience. It's like a, it should be an indie, but. right? If this movie, if this exact movie was starring Kristen Stewart, it would open in like forty theaters. It would get the audience that would like it would go see it. But yeah. you put Jennifer Lawrence in, and it's like, oh, she's the Hunger Games biggest right. star on the planet, right? So like, because when I went to see it, I would. I could feel that almost everyone in the screening I saw hated the movie. Because they didn't know what it was going to be. Yes, they thought it would be a horror movie, and then it was like this weird psychological thriller, you know, like allegory for an artist dealing with his relationships type of movie. And that's not what people want to see Want to see out of Jennifer Lawrence. They movies. want a straight up ABC type right. D mm-hmm. type plot. Right, right. And it's not that. So what would you say, what is it about? Um, if, you to, if you had to interpret it, I mean, the, or what, 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 the so plot the and overall the kind of what thing, I think that is happening in the movie is like Javier Bardem and Jennifer Lawrence are this married couple. It's not a new house; it's like they were rebuilding his house, his house that had like a oh, fire okay. or something. I probably just screwed that up. Okay, and they're like she in a, and Jennifer Lawrence is doting on him. He's a poet and. She's rebuilding this house for him. They start getting visitors, and it keeps getting more like surreal as it goes along. Like the first half hour, it's kind of based in reality. It's a little based in reality, and then things keep escalating, and you just get all these random visitors, and people are tearing the house apart. And then she gets pregnant, and she has a baby. And I mean, do you want to go all? The yeah, way well, it? yeah, we can. We, well, you get into it. Yeah, whatever. I mean, at the end of the movie, they uh, her baby is born. 
and these people like and the people who visit are I just like, picture it all being gross. Like everything's gross. When yeah. I heard read the thing about the toilet, I was like, Oh, everything like the baby I feel like the baby with the baby was born what, like all gross? Uh, yeah. no, the baby's born fine, but then they rip the baby limb from limb in one scene and destroy this baby. Right. Just yeah, so that for happens. no reason. Yeah, right. That I would mean, be for a reason. No, I don't know. I don't think they really had a reason to do it. But it, that's biblical because that like is it all supposed to be based off stories from the Bible, do you think? Or do you think it was, like, just supposed to be, what, this guy's his, I mean, his the, ego did, and his id? Like, like, I, or, I think it's like, both. I mean, Aronofsky, he did that Noah's Ark movie. Like, he's definitely someone who is, I don't know if he's religious or not, but definitely has a lot of religion issues that he's working through. So there's a scene where they show them pulling the baby limb from that. Well, no, the baby's neck just breaks while they're, like, sort of... Like raising it up like a, some kind of messiah, hint, hint, and then right. um, they then they, then it's shown that there's this like bloody corpse and everyone's eating the baby. There you go. That's why I'm not <laughs> so saying this movie. Like that. That's the grossest part of the movie. It that's is. at the end. So it's like the whole rest of the movie's. Pr- I mean, there's everything. And that's, crazy. so. There's no thing where there's no. There's no peek into like, hey, this is what we've been doing the entire time. It just, it gets to be surreal, it stays surreal, it ends surreal, and you walk out. Kind of, but I think it builds really well. Like, I don't think it's like step one, it goes totally to crazy. Like, I think by the time things happen, it feels like it was time for that next level of craziness to happen. And the, is there a plot that's resolved in the movie? Or is it literally just once it gets surreal, it just, stuff's happening for the sake of being weird? Or stuff's happening for the sake of feeding the allegory, or, or you know what I'm saying? It's it's all built into this like uh, allegory, so the, there's no like plot to follow, and at the end, it kind of just like goes back to the beginning of the movie, so it's all very just like cerebral. And, okay, so yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's basically so in the middle of the movie, there's a scene where you see like Javier Bardem has this like crystal in his like office, and no one's supposed to go in there, and someone goes in and they break it, and he like freaks out, and you never know why he's like so obsessed with that. And then at the end of the movie, like, Jennifer Lawrence, like, blows up the house and is dying. And then he, like, reaches into her and pulls out her heart. And her heart is a crystal. And he puts it, like, onto the same spot. And then the next morning, like, you see someone wake up. And it's just, like, another, like, 25-year-old girl who looks like Jennifer Lawrence. And so the, the whole movie is sort of, like, to me, it's, like, him wrestling with how men uh, take these women and then like use them and then just like move on to the next one of the same type. Okay. But see me and my friend, we both saw it and had the same sort of, we were just seeing it as this is the creative process. So mm-hmm. like I actually found myself identifying with the Javier Bardem character. Mm-hmm. Cause just, just like he keeps saying like, I'm the creator and this is what I do. So like he uses Jennifer Lawrence as the inspiration mm-hmm. for his art and then discards her and moves on to the next person, which is what a lot of artists do. I think. And, mm-hmm. So it's just trying to show that you think. Well, that's what I thought, the, but then the, I yeah. And then, but then you don't. And then, or you, do you think Aronofsky? Do you think he was like, I'm going to leave this up into, to interpretation, or I have a direct idea of what this is? He explained what it's literally about because so many people were shitting on it that he came out like, here's what the movie's about, <laughs> and he was just like, it's about the environment. It's like a very environmental themed movie. It's about how we're mistreating the earth. Oh like, wow! <laughs> Jennifer <laughs> Lawrence wrong. represents Mother Earth, and oh, Javier well, Bardem is God, and that's like. And then all these figures like Cain and Abel are in there, uh, Adam and Eve are in there. The crystal represents the apple in the Garden of Eden. So mm-hmm. it's like all in there. And I just – I didn't pick up on it the first time. And I saw it again to see it that through that lens. And I was like, okay, I see it now. See, I, maybe I'll check it out. I think any movie though, it's – there. Are, you know, even if the person who made it has one specific interpretation, like a good movie like that, there's a million ways you mm-hmm. can look at something. And, I mean, even, like, looking at his personal life, he's uh, dating, like, Jennifer Lawrence now, I think. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, I think he was, like, married to Jennifer Connelly or Rachel Weisz or something. So he's almost mimicking the movie. Yes. I definitely think there's a little bit of him working through his own issues there of, like, like you said, like, oh, these are his, his, like, muses. And he, like, sort of goes from one to the next. And, you know, they're all sort of the same. But I think you both will agree. It's not, like... And they kind of fucked up putting it. It's not a mainstream movie. It should not have been out in three thousand theaters, or you know. What I, mean? I mean, I guess I don't know if it even was, but I think it was out in enough where people are like, oh, Jennifer Lawrence, right, right, right. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess it's like if she's going to be in a movie, it's going to by default be a mainstream movie because she's such a huge star. And right. It's a Paramount movie, so it's like it looks for all intents and purposes to be like a blockbuster. Yeah, and if it's all these regular theaters, it's not just – like they. here's the thing though. I think they, they can roll these things out. A different way they can you know they can roll them out on a smaller scale and see what happens mm-hmm. maybe they did that i don't know but i was just curious because of all the backlash that also brings us to another good topic as far as movies go which is like does social media does it ruin movies do you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's one of those things where it's like twitter the reason i brought that mother up and because you both saw it i didn't see it i was just curious what you thought and i might check it out but i just get grossed out by that stuff it's Pat not knows. gross it's not a gross movie okay it's it really is a good tense psychological and it's like funny. There was like f- when things start escalating, there's definitely like mm-hmm. funny funny Art. stuff in there. It really is just the baby thing. The baby thing, but that baby thing's a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. Yeah, that's crazy. Right, but like Twitter went crazy about it. So it's like does because the no, there's nothing better. What I've realized, and we've talked about this I think on the podcast before. Seeing a movie blank slate, not knowing anything about it, and just mm. somebody's like, "Hey, you want to check out this?" And you're like, "Yeah, all right," and you go. I did that. You, there's very few movies that you get to do that with. Like mm-hmm. I did that with um, Hell or High Water, mm-hmm. which is like a modern day. Oh yeah, Western. we saw that together. We, saw that together. we had any idea? We had no idea, yeah. and I loved it. And I, I there's somebody was like, "Oh, I knew it was kind of a western. I knew from the title, it's like it sounds like a western." But it wasn't. It's like a modern day western. It was supposed to be like in a de- depressed town in Texas. Now, mm-hmm. it wasn't from back in the day. It wasn't whatever mm-hmm. it was. So I'm curious. Like, we're, we have so many more chances these days of getting things spoiled for us because we literally wake up, look at our phones, and like somebody could just spoil the movie immediately. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, back in the day, like when you didn't have the internet and you didn't have social media, you had more of a chance of kind of enjoying things because you also didn't get somebody's opinion in your face the minute you bring up a movie. I just don't look at it that much. I think I use social media less than the average person, so like I okay. don't really read a lot of it. But it definitely I'm most people. Yeah, I think it does. It pollutes your lens that yeah. you're going into the movie with. It is There's sad. nothing better than going in blank slate mm-hmm. to a movie. There's nothing better because you're like, oh, even if you didn't like it, you're like, I didn't like that, but at least I had a chance to like make my own opinion. Right. Like yeah. even with Mother, I didn't read any reviews or summaries of it before I went in, but like. I knew enough that it was divisive. So even that's like yeah. some kind of level of spoiler. You're like, I'm expect- that's, I think that's why I'm so hesitant to see it. Because uh-huh. I'm like, am I going to hate this right away? Am I going to, you know, whatever it is. So I think that's, that's what I mean. Like I had the same uh, idea of it. I had the same impression from what was being said online. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, that's how I found out about it. Because I didn't even know... I didn't even know it was coming out, and I just happened to come up out, like, oh, Twitter is split on Mother. And I was like, well, what's this? And I just read an article. Uh-huh. You love things that Twitter is split on. I love it. <laughs> I love controversy on Twitter. <laughs> I usually go into movies where it's like, you hear it's so great, and then I'm disappointed. But this was the opposite, where I heard it was horrible, and then I loved it. So I think that's a cool feeling. Mm-hmm. That is. A lot of people hated this movie. It and got also, an, it got an F cinema score, <laughs> which Did is like really? the polling of audiences coming out, not the critics, but it got... An F, and I think the only other movie that got that was like. Oh, what would it be, Matt? Would it be? That's a perfect segue, Pat. I would guess it would be. Oh, oh, it wasn't Human Centipede. If that's what you're leading towards, uh, I wouldn't. People I bet you loved did. that movie. No, People they loved didn't. It. Here's the other thing we're going to talk and about. This is what we're going to talk about. You would love it if you saw it. I would not love it, and I don't. I don't even spend that much time on it because I don't want people getting grossed out by the this conversation. Your, yeah, this is your show. I no, don't yeah. Wanna... So. Yes, this is a perfect segue, because the other thing I want to talk about, Dina, you have nothing to do with this, but you can chime in if you'd mm-hmm. like. Pat has been after me for years to see the movie The Human Centipede. I, By this you point, if you're listening it. to this podcast, you probably know what it is. Pat loves it. He saw the sequels. You saw both sequels? I saw, the, I saw all of I No, the third one is a terrible movie. The second one's really good, too. Okay, so in the, in the I'm going to do this, because we have yeah. to get wrap up in a couple yeah, minutes. Yeah. We've got to take off and whatever. In the vein of the podcast, I think we had a good podcast, a very good talk about movies today. In the defense vein, this is the defense. Right. You are going to have to defend it to me right now as succinctly as you can. Give me three reasons why I should see okay. Human Centipede. And First, yes, we didn't talk about Human Centipede, I know, but most of you should know what it is. It's, it's fucked up. It's part, well, first thing, it's become part, part one, of the, the culture. First it's part of the pop culture. Human Centipede is a known phrase now. Because it broke through because of how good this movie is. Everyone knows what Human Centipede did. It invented an, a, it invented a new idea. Before Stop. this, no one had Will ever you thought... Will stop talking about a Human Centipede like it's the Ford? 
Maybe. Like it's the T. You could call the 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 T class. What was the first yeah, Ford it, called? It probably moved Model about T. as fast as the Model T. It was a T. new idea. It's information. It's the super information highway. You can it's, ride a human centipede to where you have to go. Ah, no, no, stop, stop it. All right, so you're saying the it was first, put into listen, the, the first movie. Is it also proves again, how fucking crazy people are. They latched onto this bullshit. I saw like opening week. I'm sure you did because you're a sick fuck. <laughs> and uh, it, so the first movie is not graphic. It's like they don't show the surgery happening. Oh, they talk about it. There's an amazing scene where he, when he that's the thing. Is that the videos that you sent me? Yeah, yeah. I tried to get you to watch a, a video today. I just said, he hey, sent Sean, me on. Hey, can you check video this? I, I knew what it was. <laughs> He goes, can you check this out for me? And it's literally a scene from the movie where what happens in the it's scene? It's a scene where, I wouldn't uh, watch it. where Dr. Heider uh, the German explains doctor. to the three people he's kidnapped what he's going to do to them. <gasps> and like you see, you only see like drawings of it. And it's a great movie because that's so much like scarier and more off-putting than actually seeing it happen. The way you would see in like... Even though I yeah. like Saw and Hostel and those movies, yeah. the way you would see it in those type of movies. It's yeah. just like... The description of it is so powerful. Oh, God. So it's powerful. It makes me not want to see even more. Powerful filmmaking. Very subtle. <sighs> um, Dr. Hyder, played by Dieter Laser. <laughs> Dieter Laser. Sounds like an SNL character. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is now a time in Sprocket's movie dance. <laughs> no, oh, bam, bam, he's a real person. I know. Who should have broken through into Hollywood. But I wonder why he didn't, Pat. Maybe because he was in a, a freaking <laughs> horror porno that you love. <laughs> it's not a porno. It's, uh, it's, it's horror porn. It is that. No, no. Uh, all right. It's, give me two more reasons why somebody should see this movie. And then we got to wrap up. I'm sorry to do that to you. but um, Let's see. There is well, Dieter Laser is great. The guy who plays Doctor Hyder. Okay, is it Oscar worthy? Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> what the Oscars on the on the on the dark web? Which which, <laughs> which Oscars are having Human Centipede as a nominee? <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean the acting all around is great, and it's just it's there's a lot of beautifully composed shots in there. You know, like when so you you're see saying the, the when cinematography you see this, of Human Centipede. <laughs> when you see that centipede for the first time, it's like. Oh. The framing is like, sh- this should hang in a museum. No. It's just it's, a great... It's not. It is. You have to oh, see Oh, you it. did not. You, you not, would like it. No. Uh, well, you didn't give me any reason. All you said was cinematography, Dieter Laser, a German <laughs> actor. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't give a shit about that. And then also... Uh, and it, it, it and then, added to the pop culture lexicon. That's actually a very original good... That's the only thing I'll give you is like, you're right. The one thing that makes me want to see it is like... How did this? Why did this go catch on so much when it came out? Because it's such a unique idea, Ugh. and like I said, it's subtle. It's not like graphic in the way they show things. It's Ugh. not a slasher movie. Well, I'll tell you right now, I will not be. Did you see it? Human I Center? didn't see it. I will not see it. <laughs> you did not convince to. me. I appreciate you I trying to. I'm a little convinced. Ah! No! All right, that's a perfect way to end here. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Uh, did you guys have fun? Yeah, yeah. it was great. Uh, please do this. We'll start with Dina. Uh, would you like to plug anything coming up? Live dates, Twitter, your own show, whatever you want to do. Uh, is, will this be out before the 3rd? This will be out Friday. Oh, okay. Uh, October 3rd at Caroline's at 730. I'll be doing a half hour. Please come out. That's and- awesome. With uh, somebody else? or uh, I have some people opening. Um yeah. Oh, you're doing? Okay, cool. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. Good for you. That's 730 what day? October 3rd? Yes. Carolines.com. Check it out. Yes. And um, you watch your Twitter? At Dina Hashem underscore. And Pasquale? Uh, how to Watch Movies the Right Way, the podcast. Download it now. You're in the app right now as you listen to this. <laughs> yeah, That's download Pat's thing. podcast. It's awesome. And it inspired this podcast. Let's be honest. It really did. Uh, also, we uh, anything else? What's no, your, the, Twitter the or anything else? Just go and, download it on iTunes, How to Watch Movies. And That's, you have a YouTube channel, don't you, or no? Uh, yeah, Fortress of Attitude is my YouTube channel. I think that's the... You, you okay, just search cool. me on YouTube and I've got a million videos out there. And uh, we do our show at Showbriz Studios with Alex, our pal. Uh, please check them out. They have a YouTube page. They have an iTunes page. And they have... Well, what is it? An iTunes... You're on the iTunes page. And then also... Um, 
Check out Defend Your Movie. It's on Twitter, at Defend Your Movie. It's on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Defend Your Movie. And uh, yeah, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Defend Your Movie. Sign up for the Patreon. You get some extra you get extra episodes uh, as T-shirts. We, we still have the supply. You'll, you'll get a T-shirt. you get all sorts of goodies. So check it out. Thank you so much. Farrell will be here back next week. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for doing this. And we'll see you next time. I love you so much. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I did not steal Pat's podcast. <laughs>